But we also said that we could get k of n things into some order by first picking the set of k things without regard to their order and then putting them in some order. Right? So instead of, in, instead of uh, you know, if, if, if these, if the 10 objects were, I'm going to get rid of the screen for the moment. I think it's just in the way. And the question is, if I use a different source, will this go blank? It will. <clears throat> All right, so let's suppose that my, my 10 objects are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Is that 10? Is that 10? <laughs> Wish I had chalk. So the way we just conceptualized this process was I'm going to pick one of these 10 things to be first. Let's say that it's A. And I'm going to pick one of these things to be second. Let's say it's F. And I'm going to pick one to be third. Let's say it's D. And then I'm going to pick B. And then I'm going to pick H. And then I'm going to pick J. And then I'm going to pick C. Okay, so that's one particular ordering of seven of these 10 things. That leads kind of directly to this notion of NPK. There's a different way we could get there. We could first say, oh, I'm going to pick the set A, B, C, D, um, F, H, J. Okay, and then I'm going to put these seven things into some particular order, and that's an example of an order I could put those seven things into. So far, so good? All right. So the number of ways there are of putting seven of ten things into some order is the number of ways there are of picking seven of ten things and then putting those seven of 10 things into some particular order. Right? These, this two-stage process gives the same number of results as the one-stage process. Yep. So each, how many ways are there of putting a set of seven things into some order? We've, got, we've been given this set now. We picked seven from the 10, and now we want to put these into some particular order. Okay, so there's seven factorial ways of ordering these things. I could put the A first. Having put the A first, I have six choices. I have seven choices for what to put first. Might, might be the A. Having picked that, I have six choices for what to pick sec put second. Might be the F. Having done that, I have five choices for what to put third. Might be the D, right, et cetera. Okay, that would lead to that particular permutation. So because this two-stage process is going to lead to the same number of sequences of 7 of 10 things, what we know is that the number of sets of 7 of 10 things times 7 factorial is equal to the number of permutations. Right? So if we first pick a set and then put it in some order, we're going to end up getting all sequences of seven things that way eventually. So we know that this last number is equal to 
10 P7, which is, okay, time for the other chalk, <clears throat> which is equal to 10 factorial over Right? <clears throat> we know that that's equal to that. So the number of sets of 7 of 10 things must be this divided by 7 factorial. Okay? So what we've got now is that the number of sets of seven of ten things is equal to n, sorry, is equal to ten p seven divided by seven factorial, which is equal to ten factorial over three factorial times seven factorial. <clears throat> Okay, and in general, this reasoning holds, and the number of sets of k of n things is going to be n p k <coughs> over k factorial, which is n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And we give this a symbol, which is n choose k. Right? That's the number of combinations of n things taken k at a time, the number of subsets of size k taken from a population of size n. <clears throat> 